Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. We're going to be going over a very simple reaction today and we're going to be looking at limiting and excess reactants. So the first thing that you're going to need is a blank piece of paper where you are going to construct the following table with the equation at the top and the question underneath. So let's start with just the equation. So what I'm going to be doing is a reaction where I'm mixing sodium bicarbonate with acetic acid and then we're going to be manufacturing water, carbon dioxide, and then sodium acetate floating around in the water. So it's a reaction that everybody's aware of, that everybody's seen hundreds of times before, but the difference is that we're going to be looking at two different mixtures of our reactants. So the question that you're going to be answering is which flask do you think will produce the most gas? So construct this table I have three different flasks, each with the same mass of vinegar in the bottom of them. So I have 50 grams, 50 grams, and 50 grams. So that's like our constant. The variable that we're going to be changing here is the mass of baking soda. So I have 1.5 grams in the first container, 3.5 in the second, and then 5.5 in the third. So construct a table that looks like this, and then this is where you're going to be recording your observations. So you can pause the video if you need to construct this table, but we're going to be looking at our reaction now. So here are our flasks. This has our uh, 1.5 grams of sodium bicarbonate inside of the balloon, and you can see that there are 50 grams of vinegar in the bottom here. This is our flask number two. This has our 3.50 grams of sodium bicarbonate and again the same amount of vinegar in the bottom. And the black balloon has the most. It has 5.5 grams in the balloon and then you can see that there is still again the exact same amount of vinegar is in each one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert these balloons and we're going to like um, kind of see what happens and I might have to hold them down, so we'll see if I'm able to record all of this at once. But uh, here we go. So here is our first reaction, like that. I'm going to around, kind of see what happens. And it normally takes at least a couple of minutes for the reaction to stop. So now here's our, our second one. And then we have our third one, so we'll be flipping that one around. Okay, okay that one's getting weighed down because there's liquid getting inside, so I'm going to try to get the liquid out. There we go. And so this is our result, and that one's still going on, so that's number three. So we have balloon number one, balloon number two and balloon number three and that's still going on and so what did you notice so you should notice that this one has the fewest so this has the least amount of co2 gas made this one has again a reasonable amount of gas and so does this one now ideally these would be the exact same size this balloon is a little bit more i guess you'd say like pliable so it was able to fill up with a little bit more or look like it was filling up with a little bit more gas Something else that you might notice is that the bottom of this container is totally clean, that it's all liquid. And then this is still reacting a little bit, but also, other than the bubbles, it's totally clean. This flask, on the other hand, which is still kind of reacting, you can actually see at the bottom here, there are solid chunks of baking soda in that reaction flask. So there we go. All right. So that is our demonstration. Now the question is, why did that happen? So, if we take a look at this, what happens when I convert these amounts to moles? Uh, when I convert the first flask's amount of baking soda, I get 0 0.0179 moles. Moles of the vinegar, because it's 5% vinegar in that solution, 0 0.0417 moles. In the second flask, I had the exact same amount of both. And in the third flask, I had more baking soda than I did vinegar. Okay, so now the question that you're going to be answering on your paper 
is why do you think that two and three were approximately the same size? I mean, they're still going, but you can actually kind of see they look a little bit more similar now than they did a couple of minutes ago. So why are they approximately the same size? Think of what's going on in these reactions, and also look at our balanced equation. It's a one-to-one -one ratio between baking soda